River State Governor Simnalaye Fobara has announced that he would present the state 2025 budget to the Okojombo-led State House of Assembly. Fobara, who made the revelation at the commissioning of projects and Boni local government area on Saturday, was represented by the Chief of Staff, River State Government House, Edison Ehe, at the event. Addressing Okojombo, Ehe partly said, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your support to the River State Government, as seen in your cooperation. The Speaker has facilitated the screening of caretaker committee chairman, expedited executive requests, and will soon play a vital role in enacting the 2025 budget. He stressed that the assembly will stay focused despite opposition from enemies of the state or the 25 former members. Okojombo revealed that the 2025 budget will soon be presented to the 10th assembly and confirmed that Boni local government will be included in the upcoming infrastructure projects. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Daniel Momo. Daniel, what do you make of this story? Uh, well, um Thank you once again for having me. Uh, first, I think that uh, there is a crisis in the state. Okay. Um, crisis of um, uh, legality as to whether which house or which house is not mm -hmm. um, the validly uh, house to represent the state. And you know my positions before now. Mm -hmm. That I, where the governor has been accused of uh, probably to have uh, uh, failed to uh, obey court order. And my clear position then was that a man does not appeal a case and at the same time again reprobate and go back to the house to present the budget. I think that as at the time that he has appealed those cases, I think he's still within the window of him still operating with that house. And following by that, for this, I think, in quote, even though, as of today, I, Daniel Momo, recognize the Martin and Mikuli led House of Assembly, first from the judgment of the Federal High Court to the Court of Appeal, until any other thing nullifies that, that's I, I, not the governor of the state. And so, I would, this is my personal advice, that I prefer that we give some time because budget circle can still be extended. It doesn't matter that we have to present this budget now and, mm. that. and it doesn't stop the activities of the state if this current budget is still the legal budget that the state runs. I think that we should give some windows to some of the appeals that the states and the mm. government had done and let's see because one of it is at uh, the supreme court well, I mean, two of it mm -hmm. is at the supreme court currently so i think we should give some window allow let's still allow the 2024 budget to run itself so that at the end of the day we do not have that lock jam when it, because the case can go either way mm -hmm. that's the truth the case can go for the side of the governor, and it can also, also go for against the governor of I mean, against the governor and the employee general of the states. So I think that my personal opinion would have been that can we leave the 2025 budget and still run the 2024 budget? All right. Probably because this budget can still take mm. legally can still take up to March ne ne next year. Right. We have had budget circles who are taking even mm. above, even when Tinubu came on board. We were running two budgets. Concurrently. So it, it doesn't bring that illegality in it. I right. think because of the crisis, mm. because of the crisis and things in court, mm -hmm. I would have expected that the governor should please. That's my advice and my personal opinion. All right. That he should give some time and allow the 2024 budget to keep running. All right. Um, you, you, made, uh, you, you said allow some time, let it keep running. However, that still brings us to uh, the same conundrum that we are in, doesn't it? Because, I mean, if there should be grace given or extension or whatever to allow the 2024 budget to run, it will still have to be done by the State House of Assembly. Isn't no, it? No. Hold on. Okay. And the governor has said he will not recognize the Martin Samevuli River State House of Assembly. Now, even if you, quote, you, you made mention of uh, President Tinibu when he resumed office that the 2023 budget and 2024 budget was running concurrently, 
However, the 2024 budget was presented. So while the 2023 budget was running, the 2024 budget was running as well. You would agree with me that Nigeria currently is running full cycle budget. And according to the Nigerian constitution, budget is expected to be presented at least three months before its inception. That's what the, I think three or four months before the inception. That's what the constitution provides. Uh, but then moving forward, what, how do you see this playing out? If you say let time be extended, it still boils down to the legislature. I understand. You see, um, why I am appealing, uh -huh. uh, the governor has routines of eight professionals who would advise him what to do, what not to do, to go ahead and all of that. I'm only saying, for me as an individual, seeing all of the crisis, uh -huh. uh, take, uh, take for instance, uh, why I said this case could go either way. Um, this 2024 budget was presented to the current chief of staff. You know, at that time, he had the nod of the court to go ahead before the governor presented that budget to, to him. He had the grace of the court to go ahead to do what he has done. So that's why the case might go either way. But I think that um, my opinion now, my opinion, is that the governor should give a grace and allow us to see through to some of these cases. Yeah, right. Probably some of these cases might come before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Let's see what, 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 what goes, because it, like I said, it might go either mm -hmm. way. Now, let's take it without conceding that it goes against the governor. It means that the governor can be punished for what he did in 2024. That's what I'm saying, look, uh, let's give ourselves some grace. All right. And to say that, okay, um, let the 2024 budget run. Mm -hmm. You can go You can go back to to the same house you presented the budget to mm -hmm. and ask that for an extension of grace. Right. If they grant it, it becomes legal, it becomes binding. All right. But I would want the governor to just give some grace mm -hmm. and allow some time so that Let's see what plays out at the, at the, at the Supreme Court. All right. Um, very importantly, uh, one of the issues you raised that I feel is worthy of note and probably further addressed is uh, you said that uh, the action of Edison Nehi passing the appropriation bill into law was backed by a court order. It was backed by a court a order. Court order. Now, um, I would uh, want to clarify. Probably I will ask the legal person here. Was it a court order that backed the DCNA to pass that, uh, the 2023 budget, or did a court order simply say that he is the Speaker of the House? Because there are two different things a court order backing an action and a court order, you know, upholding a position. They are two different things. That's on one hand. And then um, moving forward, if uh, Edis, the, another, a court has said, that what the governor did is null and void. That presentation of budget is unacceptable. And uh, everything done by Edison, that particular budget in, the, in that instance is um, null and void, is illegal, the governor should represent. Now, argument is that the, the, the budget, this budget <coughs> is, is running, it's, it's at the expiration of its lifespan. So why not let it go? Regardless that, yes, a court judgment was given in January 2022, but then appeal has been made and further appeal to the Supreme Court. And the budget is coming to the end of its lifespan. So to what intent and purpose is Ali? Yeah, uh, let me first quickly clarify the fact that no court gave uh, what they quickly did was in a way to quickly you know, not be caught by the anger of the house. They went out, sat down somewhere, and then they considered themselves into a faction. And at that point, a year was, you know, proclaimed, according to them, as the Speaker of the House. And then shortly after the Governor presented that appropriation bill before them, a bill that was passed just a day, it has never happened. Now, what you ask people need to understand is that a year, Edison, to be clear enough, was never speaker, university of assembly, by any known law of the land. In fact, as I when a year, this thing was suspended, and, and the other three members, you remember that as I speak to you today, they didn't, they did not challenge 
the purpose of that, their suspension. And as at that time, there was no contention as to who was the rightful speaker or members of the House. They did not even challenge that suspension, which means that suspension was ongoing. In fact, it was within the period that they were suspended that they formed themselves into that three-man or four-man committee and then, you know, uh, illegally entertained the budget appropriation bill of the entire state and then passed it, you know, probably passed it into law. So somebody that was suspended, the law begins to wonder what authority does the person now have to entertain a bill. In fact, look at, if I say 32 constituencies, and then you present a budget to uh, uh, four constituencies, it, it amounts to an aberration, it's a constitutional infraction, because what it means is that you are shutting out an entire 27 or 28 uh, constituency from making input into the budget. So as at that point, the presentation of the actions of the governor was wrong because one, the said persons that you are presenting the budget were already suspended. And there is no record that they ever appealed or that they ever challenged that suspension. And then as a, number two, they did not also raise the issue of the validity of the speakership of Martin Samiwuli. So it was, it, 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 was, it was a traffic light that the governor needed to see why he was driving the administration to know that, no, this is a time bomb for me as a governor. And you see, what I expect the governor to know is that, or I expected him to know is that you are riding under it's a constitutional democracy. We are not operating a parliamentary democracy. Whether you don't like the judge or not, the rule of law must be obeyed. That is most important. So as I went, the governor went to present that budget before these four persons, here Edison was never the speaker of the house. And then the court did not give him the power but there was a court uh, that was yes a court. later there was a court in fact what happened yes, later what was happened? that uh, a, uh, shortly after a year resigned shortly after a year resigned and then again sh shortly after a year resigned and then um oko jumbo you know uh, mm -hmm. went to court to say that they should declare because these other people were also sitting as well parallel you know and then went to court and said they should declare their seat vacant. That was what brought in the issue of Justice Charles Wally's judgment, saying that the, you know, that all the acts that they have carried out within the period should be legitimized, and then declare the seat of uh, Martin Zamiwuli vacant, which right. the court eventually did. So you would see that that now threw up, that now threw up the issue of appeal. You understand, it threw up the issue of appeal to the court of appeal, where the 27 lawmakers went to court to say no. First of all, in fact, as a lawyer, I would tell you, instead of going running around a process, you go and hit the nail by the head and say, see, we see that by virtue of the constitution of this country, the River State High Court lost jurisdiction in entertaining the matter. And then what was what the court of appeal heard and say, see, in order for us not to even waste time around all the issues arising from the facts deposed by the affidavit before this court, that the, ha the River State High Court does not have jurisdiction to even entertain the matter. Therefore, every action that they have taken so far, including interlocutory uh, orders made so far, therefore was uh, um, you know, uh, quashed and nullified by eventually. So that would mean, that would mean, that what the governor needed to do was it ought to show you know, it showed that Martins and Mewuli, as at that time, were still members of the house and are uh, members of the house and still speaker. Now they went on appeal. After this appeal, they lost an appeal, and then now I think they are at the Supreme Court. So what we expected the governor to do is simply following, and you remember, in all these positions. We, the, the, there was not a, a place where the court said, well, uh, state of execution fight in these matters, uh, it should be stayed. You understand? 
the court quash that judgment, knowing that this court does not have jurisdiction to handle this matter. And then now they are at uh, the Supreme Court. So that is why I even frowned at the statement of the Attorney General that said, when the court quashed the jurisdiction of the High Court, the court did not reinstate. The court did not reinstate the 27 lawmakers. That was a statement that was made with political sentiment. And as the Lord just, uh, a law, chief law officer of the state, we hold that uh, it was it was a statement that was taken too far. All right. I I, I also asked a question around uh, the the argument around the presentation of the 2024 budget that it was coming to yeah end. already uh, an yes, end. Yes, it's coming to an the, end. The thing is that in law, in the eyes of the law, whatever is wrong is wrong. Okay. It's just like when the court said, uh, uh, former governor of River State, uh, Sir Celestial Mayor, was not a governor in the eyes of the law. You know, but by some certain level of political intervention, today, uh, you know, the, now, the House of Assembly, you know, by a way of uh, returning uh, the integrity that the you know, that was already kept recognizing. All right. Now, so when the law says a thing is not done, and mind you, Justice Omoto Shaw's judgment made it clear. He said there was no presentation, that the presentation of the budget or appropriation bill of the 32 constituencies of the River State House of Assembly to four persons was an aberration, I'm using this language, was an aberration an illegality of the law. And he now made a writing order that the governor should immediately, that was the Christmas of the court, immediately go back and represent this budget at that extent, even if it was not going to be legal. All right. By the position of the judgment, mm. the governor now had a window to rewrite the wrong. Whether they will respend the money is another thing. But in order to now set the standard straight, the governor ought to have obeyed that procedure. And for not doing so already amounts to very serious grounds for uh, uh, what, what, what amounts to gross misconduct, uh, official gross misconduct, and uh, eventually uh, we amount well, to. Well, when, when you say it will amount to of of impeachment uh, offenses. Well, grounds. But, but then the argument would be that probably he is waiting for the Supreme Court to either affirm or obtain they have the not, they are no state of, of the lower court. There are no state of execution. Okay, there's no state of execution. Yeah. So it's it, all right, very well. But I'm um, sorry, let me just quickly uh, just break down certain things here so that we are clear. I, I think no, I'm, I'm still getting. Let, no, no, let Virginia hold on. No, no, let him I think we are taking our bites. Let Virginia Let Virginia build the bridges. Virginia Richard. Virginia Richard, what do you make of this entire story? Well, it is not good to the states. Say, but uh, I wondered what really happened from the beginning because uh, if you check the record, these are people of one political party, mm. the BDP assets, it's what then and all that. And what will happen that uh, campaigns were done around election conducted, people emerged 32 governors and the uh, senators, three. As of rep, 11s and all that, all of the same party. What we generate that bad situation where all of a sudden, into three months or four months, you begin to see the level of confusions that we are also still in today. So that brings me back to today. The budget of 2024 was well presented to the governor, the governor sent it to it. And it's running. But come to 2025, the courts have said uh, you need to represent it. But the governors appealed that judgment mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court and has also applied for a state of execution. So the governor is still within the window. The second execution was oh, denied. No, no, in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, the yes. Supreme Court approved of that. It no. has to be that approved. No, no, no. no. The state has applied. 
We don't need to speak on to approve it. No, why? They, ask the court will either approve it's not or deny. Uh, now, if I may, let me just um, give you an instance. The local government election, when uh, judgment was given by the Federal High Court, I think uh, Justice Peter Lifo mm. of the Federal High Court, the governor went to... Uh, he appealed for stay of execution of that judgment. In the Court of Appeal? Or and it of was Supreme? denied. Is it in the Court of Appeal? At Appeal, and it was denied. Supreme Court so Supreme Court, it's when you thing. appeal, they don't need to... I have not... I have not it's not, never denied? record, I have not seen. I have not seen. I'm telling you as a lawyer. I haven't seen. So the governor... So me, if I may understand, Engineer Richard, you're saying that if one applies of, for stay of execution, to Supreme Court, it is automatically yes. approved. It's automatic. It is automatic running. Yes, that's what, to the best yeah. of my knowledge. No, but I stand not, to be corrected but, uh, yeah, not correct. at a very yeah. spirit argument and all that. So, all right. To that extent, the governor is within the reach and the power. And remember, uh, 109 subsection 2 or 3. 9G. Yeah, yes, 109. Said, yes. Yeah. One. Said, well, once Jeez. you decamp from that political party, you automatically lose that seat. Is it self-executory? Is not. You see, we, the, it, is, it is left for the law to now realize these things to us. Because that's the confessions we are having. Okay. The confession we say this today, then those who are implementing it will do another thing too. And that's giving confession. And that's the whole thing that's happened within River State. And that's okay. where we are. So, but to come to the point of today, the governor have all rights, like he have also said, mm. that's going to put out the budget. Uh, to the Oko, 2025 budget, yes, to Oko, uh, Jumbo, okay. and all that. So it's within his reach to do that, and he has all the liberty to do that so that the state cannot be grounded. Mm. Remember what these people are looking for, like uh, which people uh, the 27 lawmakers, and, all right. Uh, like uh, my brother lawyer have said, my friend lawyer have said that they want impeachment of the governor. And I also want to ask you people were all together now from the beginning. What separated you? What interests do you people have mm. that will now make people go apart? Right. People are 32 members in the assembly, PDP. Mm. You have 11 rights of reps, PDP. Yeah. Three senators, PDP. Mm. The leader of the party, PDP. The governor, PDP. What will now be that thing that will now want you to impeach the governor? That you are building up all these things. What are you doing? What are you looking for? Right. If not, possibly to control the resources of River State mm. by just one individual. All right. Very well. Uh, Engineer Richard, uh, very quickly, you, you made reference to what um, Barrister Don said, and you said that he said that what the 27 lawmakers want, and Martin Samibli, the River State House of Assembly, what they want is to impeach the governor. I don't think he made that no, statement. I didn't. I didn't. No, no, he made reference yeah. to that. No, no, he didn't say that. I what he not. said was that the governor was committing an impeachable offence if the judgment so. of the if the judgment of the appeal court is upheld by the Supreme Court that the governor has committed so an impeachable offence. You understand? Now, let me come back. I just wanted to clarify that, but um, still building on what you have said when you said that the governor is well within his rights to present the 2025 budget to the Okojumbo faction of the State Assembly. Uh, I want to ask now, one would wonder, is that not uh, supporting or aiding and abating contempt of court? Is that not aiding and abating lawlessness in this instance? Because, I mean, there are two court judgments that is yet to be upturned. Uh, there are two court judgments that are still subsisting and they have life. And the court judgment says the governor should present the 2024 budget to uh, Martin Amehule, that's on one hand. But we are looking at the 2025 budget now. Now, in that court judgment, Martin Samehule's authenticity and that House of Assembly, the River State House of Assembly led by Martin Samehule was authenticated by these two court judgments. And you are saying that the governor can go ahead to de-recognize the people known to the law and go with the people he chooses to work with now, let me ask you a question from the constitutional perspective. Now, the Constitution says that um, the, the Houses of Assembly must have a certain quorum to legislate. If I may build my premise on the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in favor of Joshua Darier of Plateau State, when he was impeached 
um, Peter Darie of Plateau State, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua not Joshua. Peter, Joshua, Joshua Darie of Plateau State when he was impeached by the uh, Plateau State House of Assembly. The Supreme Court ruled by that members. The Supreme Court ruled that the members that constituted that plenary to impeach Joshua Darie did not meet a quorum because they were just eight members. Now, the Constitution gives minimum of, I think, 25 members, 24, 24 members yes. minimum, and eight members impeached him. And when Supreme Court was ruling, they said that the eight members can actually meet. They can actually sit. They can actually have a plenary. However, in matters or legislations that requires one third or two third, they cannot legislate unless they meet that quorum. This is the, the ruling of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying the governor is well within his rights. Now I'm looking at this, not from the angle of sentiment, but from the angle of the, of the law, yes. And the question is, what the law says is 24 minimum. And we have three man, faction of the assembly so and the governor are, wants are to members. the governor wants to present Section 91 is clear hold on there. hold on i'm asking him a question the governor is insisting on presenting budgets against the law are we not driving into a state of anarchy at this point uh we are not driving into any sort of anarchy okay because uh as far as the law is concerned today Mm -hmm. And once the governor has appealed that to the Supreme Court, to me, I feel he has the window to still go ahead to do that. So, so to break the law further? Not breaking the law. To him, to the governor who has Attorney General, who has lawyers around him, mm. he has some advice, as the case may be, to do that. And remember, we, we, I still look at it from this angle. Maybe the governor is looking at it from these uh, other men have decamped before and they are no longer members of the assembly. Irrespective of whatever comes. So maybe he's still looking at that window. All right. 